It's Voodoo 51292's Top 10 Games of 2011. My personal picks for the best 10 games of the year. Hey everyone, and welcome back to The Countdown. In the last video, you saw me hand out my Honorable Mention Award for 2011 to the brand new IP from id Software, Rage. But now, starting with this video, it's time to get to the real meat of what this countdown is all about, the top 10 games of 2011. And in this video, I will reveal my first entry into my top 10 games of the year. And in a year that really, to me, wasn't very good when it came to FPS games. There wasn't a whole bunch of FPS games that I really found very good or enjoyable this year. This game actually stood out as one of the better FPS's of 2011 and makes my countdown of the top 10 games of 2011. So ladies and gentlemen, here it is, my number 10 game of 2011. The number 10 game of 2011, Killzone 3. To be honest with everyone, I was a little apprehensive when I decided to play Killzone 3 this year for the PlayStation 3. Mainly because I had tried to play the game's predecessor, Killzone 2, back in 2009 and really didn't like the game very much. I found it to be a very hard, grueling, unnecessarily difficult game with not much of a plot line, and I didn't like it so much that I actually never beat Killzone 2. But I decided to give Killzone 3 a go in 2011, and I'm pleased to announce that Killzone 3 actually is a pretty good FPS game, one of the best of 2011. Killzone 3 picks up where Killzone 2 left off. Emperor Vazari is now dead, and the Helgen planet is still up in arms over that and would like to annihilate the Earth and do this in Killzone 3. The Hellgas actually plan to launch an all-out attack on the planet Earth, and you, who are still Sevchenko and your crew, are tasked with stopping them, obviously, from destroying your home planet. And... Although the plot isn't necessarily a very intricate one, it's still, in my opinion, an improvement from Killzone 2. And there's actually some twists and turns in the plot. And there's sort of a mystery aspect, almost, when you discover some green substance that the Hellgas have been transforming into weaponry. And you need to kind of figure out what it is and see if you can use it for yourself. So, Killzone 3's plot... Not intricate, but better in my opinion than Killzone 2's. Now, the gameplay of Killzone 3 is pretty much what you would expect from an FPS game. You will be clearing out large uh, open battlefields of enemies, as well as some smaller rooms and hallways. You'll be using a variety of weapons in Killzone 3. And the game actually does try to spice it up a little bit by adding some parts of the game where you're in a vehicle and you're doing combat and some other parts where you're actually doing stealth gameplay, which is actually pretty fun. And so overall, I thought the gameplay of Killzone 3 was pretty good and pretty polished. Also, the graphics of Killzone 3 are something to applaud. They are some of the best you will ever see on a console. It's very difficult to get graphics that are better than that of Killzone 3's. I mean, the environments look almost hyper-realistic and looks like you could actually be there if it weren't for the screen between you and the environment. So it's a pretty immersive atmosphere. The graphics are really amazing, and I really enjoyed that aspect of Killzone 3 and thought it was absolutely done well. After the campaign, the game actually offers a pretty interesting multiplayer mode where you can play as different classes, and you can depending on what class you are, do all sorts of different things, such as building turrets and that type of thing. And it's pretty interesting, and the graphics on the multiplayer are pretty outstanding as well. So with all these good things being said, how come Killzone 3 only made it to number 10 on our countdown this year? Well, to put it simply, Killzone 3 is pretty much your standard FPS. It's not really an innovative game as far as gameplay is concerned, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but... In this day and age, when you have such amazing games coming out that are innovating, to remain at the top of the top, you need to innovate in some way to compete with some of these other games. Also, the game does have some bugs, such as an audio bug, where actually you can hear the same phrases repeated two and three times, and it's a little off-putting to be engrossed in this hyper-realistic atmosphere and then have something silly like that happen. 
and the game does still give you some pretty cheap instant deaths at times some beginner's traps which i've never been a fan of in games and also in the multiplayer unfortunately it suffers from a pretty bad frame rate issue where sometimes when a lot of things are going on on the screen at one time the frame rates will plummet and you won't know what's going on and you'll just die which is pretty offsetting when you're trying to play this good multiplayer and you have those kind of things happening so killzone 3 does have some weight that holds it back but still, in a year, like I said, where I thought FPSs really didn't perform all too well, I thought the Killzone 3 was one of the best FPSs of 2011 and also one of the best games.